Use it or lose it. At least that's what you're probably thinking about the money in your flexible spending account or your FSA. Now, FSA plans give workers the benefit to save money on health expenses pre-tax, but these accounts do have restrictions and, of course, deadlines. Now, typically, FSA users need to use their money by December 31st, but depending on which healthcare FSA plan you have, your employer can offer you a grace period. And for those who have that extra two and a half month extension, be mindful that March 15th deadline is just around the corner. Well, joining us now is Lawrence Sprung, Midlin Financial founder and author of Financial Planning Made Personal. So, Lawrence, good to see you again. So give people what they need to know here. How can FSA users best maximize the potential of their account? And what are the deadlines? What should they do between now and the deadlines? Yeah, it's great to see you as well, Rochelle. And yes, they are in uh, crunch time right now. Uh, essentially, employers can offer typically one of two options. They can either give you the extra two and a half months, so until March 15th to utilize those funds, or they can also offer you the option to potentially roll over a portion of those unused funds. So if you were left with money and your employer lets you roll it over from 2023 to 2024, you could roll over a maximum of $610. So you're either faced with typically using it by March 15th or rolling over a maximum of $610. So it is important to take a look at those balances from last year and figure out a game plan on how to use what you need to use by the deadline. And for those, Lawrence, that have some money still left over, I mean, give us a primer here again on what is FSA eligible? Yeah, so there are thousands of things that are FSA eligible and you know, with an easy search, you could figure those out. But, you know, let's say you're in a position where you have significant money left over in the account. Think about some of those high price or high ticket items that um, you might benefit from. So let's say massage can be FSA eligible. Uh, that could be a great way to take care of your wellness and utilize some of that FSA money. Maybe you haven't bought yourself a new pair of glasses in a long time, and those can be pricey, or maybe you need to stock up on contacts for the year, uh, or maybe you haven't had a uh, dental exam. You know, these are all things that are healthcare related, FSA eligible, and then included, you know, on top of that, there are thousands of products, including, you know, uh, aspirin, uh, Advil, Tylenol, pain products, medicines, things like that, that are at, you know, your normal uh, you know, retailers and pharmacies. Many of those are FSA eligible. You could go on and do a search and definitely use those monies uh, very easily. And Lawrence, sometimes it can be hard when you're sort of picking out your, your benefits for the year. You see HSA, you see FSA pop up. Talk about the difference between those and not just what you can spend, spend with them, but also your ability to perhaps borrow against them. Yeah, so your HSA, first of all, you have to have a high deductible healthcare plan to be eligible for an HSA or a health savings account. So if you have that, it's a way for you to put away pre-tax money that can be used for co-pays, you know, very similar things to an FSA. The benefit of the FSA is you do not need a high deductible savings account. So if your employer offers it, everybody is eligible for an FSA and it allows you to put monies away pre-tax for very similar things to the HSA, but you also have that lose it, use it or lose it functionality in the FSA or the ability to roll it over uh, from one year to the, the next or that extra two and a half months. The HSA is something that allows you to continue to roll over those monies and grow over time. Neither one of them can you borrow against, but you can use as a vehicle to pay for those out-of-pocket health expenses utilizing pre-tax money. Lauren Sprung, Midland Financial, joining us uh, there. Uh, some good takeaways and author of Financial Planning Made Personal. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.